Perfect, let's go. How are we doing? How are we oh, doing? Good, Welcome bro. on. Thank you for coming on at short notice as well. Um, no welcome in everybody in the chat as well. Good to see y'all. Good to see you. Um, we're going to call this one Slick Talk episode two. I know I'd done it last week, but it was only me last week. So it was more of a just chat and it wasn't actually the podcast version of the show. Um, so, and it's actually interesting this week as well, because uh, game week four is coming up. Whereas last week we we're on international break. So yeah, we're just going to get straight into it. Um, talk about game week four talk through the teams we have set up uh and and yeah um go from there so obviously the first uh, r uh real footy is back yes paz real footy is back <laughs> um yeah so no the first the, obviously the big subject's gonna be um ronaldo in terms of fpl like bringing him into the team so uh davy we'll go with you first have you brought ronaldo into your team then or no, I haven't. I've no? left him out. No, I've, I've brought Salah in instead. Um, oh, and he's a United fan too. And I'm a United fan, so it broke my heart. No, I think uh, Liverpool for this month have easy games. I think Salah's a must. And I never put Liverpool Liverpool players in, but it's just Harry. Okay, Harry okay. Did. Okay, I understand. Yeah, that, that's smart though. Like, you're thinking of fixtures. You're thinking of fixtures. Um... Yeah, I think I've maybe been a bit too biased because I've got I've got three United players in my team. So um no we'll, we'll pull up the teams obviously and like and, and talk through them. So I had the I had to make a well not a ballsy move. I didn't really have any other option. I had to I had to use my wild card early. Early early doors. Early doors. Wow. So a lot of people are already using their wild card this week just to be able to get Ronaldo in. But uh I didn't get it just to get Ronaldo in. I, I got it because my team was an absolute fucking shambles beforehand, so I I was forced to use it. So I'll show you I'll show you um my my team from last week, and we're gonna have a laugh at it, and then uh and then we'll show you what it's looking like for this week. So I'm gonna switch screens. You'll not be able to see me and Davy here for a second, and then we'll come back. So <laughs> so there's my team from last week, um. Literally the only one who done the business for me was Cavani. Um, everybody else flopped. I had James in from the week prior. He got 18 points in game week two. And then uh, and then he just went, he got obviously that red card for handle on the line. So absolutely terrible week for me. So I had to pull the wild card out. Um, so I'm going to show you what uh, I've done to the team then. So this is what we're looking like coming into game week four. Okay. So we've completely revamped the team here. Um, so I know that straight up before I like talk through the uh, the team, oh. yeah, stacked, stacked. <laughs> so um, before I talk through the team like individually for the players, um, obviously the main point a lot of people are going to be looking at is I've got Ronaldo in the team, but I don't have him captained. So I just want to talk about that quickly because automatically people are going to captain Ronaldo because his goal scoring record everywhere he goes is ridiculous. Um, but I actually think Ronaldo being on the pitch, um, he's going to start up front. I, I can't see him starting anywhere else up front. Uh, a lot of people said he might start left when and Cavani could start up front, but he's going to be the main man up front. Um, and I feel like Ronaldo being on the pitch, even if he even if he doesn't score, just his presence up front like you've got two or three center backs already worrying about him and, and marking him and it's going to create more space for the likes of Greenwood and Fernandez. Uh, yeah. Fernandez especially making the late runs into the box. So I, I've capped him as captain because um, I feel like he's actually going to, because obviously he gets more points as a midfielder for FPL. So if he scores, it's worth five points. Um, and yeah, uh, I just feel like he's going to have a bit more space to run into now because Ronaldo is going to be occupying a lot of the Newcastle center backs. Um, not only that as well, but Newcastle are without Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser coming into this game week. So that the basically the two best players in their squad, in my opinion. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're they're in for a really rough game tomorrow. Really, really rough I, game. The, I think though the your thinking might be right, but Fernandez is he still on penalties? No, so he's not. On, he he'll, he'll, he'll not. He'll not be on pound. He's not. A, but I, he gets a lot saying, of goals so, from open play, though. A yeah, lot of goals no, from open I play. I just think watching Fernandez for Portugal and watching Fernandez for United is too different from Bruno Fernandez. And for that reason alone, 
I took Fernandez out of my team completely. Understandable. Him, because he's just not he's not going to be the main man anymore for me. Just, or mm. or United because everybody's going to look at Ronaldo as the main man, and that that doesn't sit well with him. I, I don't know. I, you could argue that as a really good point, but I also feel like it would take a lot of pressure off him not being the main man anymore. And as I said before, he'll have more pockets of space to run into because Ronaldo is going to be dragging defenders away. It's just something, you know, we'll have to see how, how it pans yeah, out. Yeah, it's going to pan out. Yeah, true. Yeah, my, my gut feelings, Fernandez, I think, is going to get a bit... Uh, he'll be the one setting up Ronaldo's goals, if anything, if he does score. Um, yeah. And then if he gets a goal, it's worth five points and he'll have more space to run into. Uh, and it's not even a guarantee Ronaldo starts tomorrow. Solskjaer in his no. press conference today said he'll be on the pitch at some point. So that indicates the media that might be coming on as a sub. Um, yeah. And then just to want to, just one more thing, because we're on the topic of the United team players in my team. I seen Paz in the chat say, I think Greenwood plays left less because of Ronaldo in the team. But I don't think that is the case. Greenwood, for me, has made himself undroppable with his form. The man's fucking dynamite. So, and he can play on the right, the left, and up front. So I think he has to be in that front three somehow. Yeah. There's I, no one really starts ahead of him, really. I completely agree. And the fact that Sancho has in. It's going to take, I think it's going to take Sancho a while. To adapt. They adapt. And I think Greenwood's going to play right wing for the full year. That's why they're prepared to let Daniel James go. Yeah, no, 100%. I think that is why they let Dan James go. And it was actually really good that they got 30 million back or whatever it was for Dan James because we're not really good at uh, recouping fees for players. It's not something we're known for. So, yeah, um, yeah I think no, like Greenwood's... That, team, that, that team's a good... It's a good switch, right? I'm just looking at your team. It's... Yeah, and solid. Man, Ant- Antonio, uh, you got both them, man. All, all good. really good fixtures as well. So Sanchez, uh, like Brighton, you are like the notorious for keeping clean sheets re- recently. Um, like Duffy, I, f- I see that. That must have broke your heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 come on. No, Duffy's an aerial threat. We've seen that for the Republic of Ireland during the international break um, where he got the goal in the Ireland game. Um, and I feel like in that Brantford Brighton game is going to be super tight and it will come to like set pieces. So if Brighton do score, like he's potentially one of the goal scorers from the aerial threat that he provides um, from set pieces. And then Creswell, obviously West Ham are playing out of their skin at the moment. So I fully expect him to keep some sort of uh, clean sheet or get, get a clean sheet or, you know, provide an assist for Antonio. Samedo, Wolves again, keeping lots of clean sheets. So we've got a Wolves defender in, and they're only they're playing Watford as well. So it's, you know yeah. it's looking good for them. And then obviously <laughs> moving on to the other Wolves player, um, Traore. I, I know obviously Wolves player Wolves players are um debatable at the moment because uh they haven't scored a goal this season. But um, hold on a second, just need to remove my alert box because they're getting follow bought it for fuck's sake by that stupid Haas account. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that that Traor, Traore and uh, Wolves, obviously they haven't scored all season, but um, they've had really tough fixtures and they've they've looked a threat. They've looked like they're actually playing good football. So um, I feel like Traore um gets on the score sheet. He's, he looked really good against Man United um a couple of game weeks ago there. So I feel like against Watford, they're a bit more vulnerable. I feel I feel like they get something out of that game. Um, for for sure, they're playing good football. Yeah, just to just to back up what you're saying there about Wolves, they've actually created the most chances over the first three game weeks in the Premier League. <laughs> yeah, that, that's unreal. Considering, yeah, considering who they've played, watching the United match alone, they should have battered United. But as you said, Traore, your team your team's looking strong this week. To be honest. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. Traore is only a matter of time before he gets on the score sheet. And I think again against Watford, it's I think this is the finally the opportunity that um they get for to be clinical against United. Like you had De Gea pulling off like amazing double saves. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's just definitely the game week. I think that they they kick on. Um, yo Trailbar, I just want to thank you for that resub as well. I appreciate you seven months. You fucking sexy bastard. Um. <laughs> And then uh, Damari Gray, I brought him in. So he's only he's only uh, six or sorry five point six million. So he's super cheap, and that allowed me to like obviously bring Ronaldo in, uh, picking him. He's actually so I've got Richardson on my bench. That's one thing I've went for as well. I've got a really strong bench, and I know most people will be thinking definitely have Richardson in your team over Damari Gray. But Damari Gray game week two and game week three, he's been the most advanced player on the pitch he's been further ahead than Richardson like like heat map wise um 
and he's he's played 80 plus minutes game week two game week three i don't think he played game week one i don't think he was fit enough for that but game week two game week three got 80 plus minutes and scored in both games so i feel like uh it was it was excellent for leicester when he played for leicester but he didn't really get a run of games whereas it seems like rafa benitez has got some sort of faith in him and he's playing him consistently now so i feel like he's uh undroppable for everton right now and he's gonna he's gonna kick on and uh and have a good season. Yeah, so seems, and seems yeah, to be a main man on the team. To be fair, five point six million is why well. you cannot complain with uh, that price. And then, as I say, it allows you to have more premium picks in the team. So I've obviously went through Fernandez, Greenwood, Ronaldo. My thoughts on them. Antonio, he basically speaks for himself right now, being yeah. the top uh, scorer, and then Benarama providing for him. So yeah, str- looking looking strong uh, for this game week, and then a lot of the picks and the strong bench as well is set up for the uh, stronger fixtures. Um, I think the main reason I went for a strong bench is so I could do a bit of rotation, so I can keep my free transfers for a couple of weeks. And then in the next in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be phasing in a couple of Chelsea players because Chelsea have really, really good fixtures from game week seven to like game week 11 or something. They're playing like a, like a lot of bottom half table um, teams. So I might have to have a look at maybe taking fernandez out and brennan lukaku in or whatever somehow <laughs> um for those games uh but yeah no that that's my team then so i'll pull I'll, I'll pull up your team then um and we can go through okay sort of your thoughts on it on on your screen guys you've got uh you've got davy's team from last week yeah um as you see i had fernandez on there um i've made from that two, two changes and i've took bruno fernandez out I've took Rafinha out and I've replaced Rafinha with Mason Green Fernandez with Salah and I've kept in Salah. Liverpool is an easy, easy September. Well, compared to, I think their fixtures, no, I'll tell you the fixtures now. Mm-hmm. They're away to Leeds, home to and away to Brentford in the month of September and I think that's three easy games. So Leeds, Leeds and who? Leeds, Brentford and who? Sorry, was that? Leeds, they're away to Leeds, home to Palace. Home to Palace. Away, yeah, which is notoriously easy for Liverpool. Yes, yeah, that reason. is. And then they're away to Brentford, which should should be another straightforward enough game for for Liverpool, to be honest. Um, but I found I took Salah and captained them, even though it went against me religion. <laughs> that's the same with FPL though you can't be too uh you can't be too um loyal to your club you have to just go with uh what you feel is going to be better in terms of the fixtures I, I feel like um my team for with the United players anyway it's set up particularly for this Newcastle game um because I, I feel like Newcastle like if United don't win this game like four four or five nil, there's something wrong. Like they they should be absolutely spanking really? Newcastle. Honestly, really, yeah. yeah, honestly, like Newcastle yeah. are just gonna sit back and hold on for the lives, and it's uh, and it's yeah, it's up to United to break them down. And I've got way too much quality on the pitch to to um to not break them down easily. Yeah, I advise anybody that has Man City players in their team to take them out because the rotation of Europe and the cup. Is Pat rotation. Is, yeah, but they have Europe and they have a cup game, so... Oh, right, yeah. right. Strikers you have is not going to play every week, for sure. Okay, grand, grand. Um, uh, Let's switch back to the main screen then, and then we'll... Uh... Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, um, was there anything you want else you wanted to mention with your team? Because obviously, as I say, I can't really see it on, um, on my screen. I can only see your old team. Yeah, no, no, that was basically it. Just the avoid, basically, Man City. I, I just think, as as you say, pep rotation, it kills everybody every week. And check, and they have a European game. Um, they have European Champions game. League back this week, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they have a European game, and then they have a, a cup. I think they're away to somebody in the cup. Can't actually mind who it is, but they, so the, he's going to be rotating, and people's going to get screwed with Mares, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Get them yeah. out of your team. Uh, moving on then. So I had um, I had like a couple little topics here and there to talk about. So obviously the main topic this week in terms of the uh Premier League players has been this uh this whole shit with the um red listed countries. So obviously there was Brazilian players and Argent Argentine players that needed to go on or wanted to go on international duty. UK government um 
policies are, are not really allowing them to do that at the moment. So the club stopped them from, from going there. Uh, and then international, I think it was Brazil in particular, put in a request to FIFA to stop the clubs from using those players because they're trying to make out as if the clubs are just keeping the players there, so, like refusing to let them go to their international teams so they can play them in their games. When I actually am more on the Premier League club side here where they're just trying to protect their players because why would they want their players to go to a red listed country, potentially get COVID, in fact, the whole team fuck up the whole season? Um, so I think they're just protecting their players in that, in that sense. Um, it's it's turned out to be like a lose 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 situation for everybody because eventually, um, eventually, uh, FIFA did decide that they weren't they were going to do that ban and not let them play in the Premier League games this weekend. But now apparently, um, all the Premier League clubs are going against FIFA and saying, "Well, no, we're just going to play the players anyway because they're here." So I'm interested to see how this pans out. Like maybe they're going to get some sort of big fine or something um what 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 do you think of it it's a lot of it's a big mess isn't it yeah it's, it's it's quite messy i don't i didn't know as much as you i actually i didn't realize it was that it was that messy i thought it was straightforward to just not already play no pun um, intended by the way like messy argentine uh, <laughs> yeah we can talk about him yeah <laughs> <laughs> here he um, actually broke he actually broke the um what was it the record for most international goals by a um the South American this weekend scoring a hat trick, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And then Ronaldo obviously first, broke it for every player levels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't start that debate, please. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no. <laughs> um, no. It, as you say, it is. It's very messy. Um, I think the Premier League teams have the right for the players they play. Uh, regardless, you know what I mean. Uh, if they test negative for, COVID, I think they should be made to play international football as well. I think, I think they should be, there should be no power from either organization over them. If they want to play, they should be able to play. Yeah, I think I think it was a case of the players did want to play for their international teams. And I think I think a couple of them actually went away. But um, obviously with the red list of countries, I think the rules at the moment are when you come back into the country, you have to quarantine for like 10 days. So then they're going to be missing a couple of game weeks. Um, and obviously with European football coming back they're missing about like three or four matches maybe more uh, by the time obviously they get back to fitness and everything too if they're quarantining they're not going to be able to train with the team so um, yeah it, it, I can understand why the clubs didn't want them to go yeah. but I think I, in, I, go ahead sorry I was just going to say that in Solskjaer's press conference today I think he was talking about they've tried with like alternative options where um they were going to like try and get the players onto like private jets to keep them away from obviously like, you know, public contact, keep, get them on private jets, get them straight in with the team, avoid contact with sort of everyone on the outside, um, play their international games, come back. I feel like that, that wouldn't really be a big deal, but because of obviously how strict they are being with these rules and so oh, it's a red listed country and da da da. Like if, I, I don't think, I feel like it's getting to the stage now without getting too political about it, where it's just like, there's no common sense anymore. Like common sense isn't common yeah. anymore. Um, But yeah, no, there's nothing really much else to say about that. I, I'm just, I'm just interested to see if. Uh... I thought, I thought, well, in terms of, because we went away to Europe, obviously this year. So, mm -hmm. but we, we got basically a pass because you're a professional footballer. Yeah. That you didn't have to, you can still go into your work. To... So I don't see how that doesn't apply to, because they're proper professional footballers. So I think I it's just I because it's red listed, whereas Europe yeah. wouldn't be. I think Europe is like well, amber. Well, or... Portugal, Portugal's amber. Yeah. Well, suppose red listed. Uh, yeah. And that's what it is then. I think that's yeah. I think that's the only thing it is, yeah. But as I say, like it's just getting to the point with it all where like common sense isn't common anymore, and it's, there's definitely ways they could uh could allow the international players to go come back, be quarantined away from anybody who could potentially have COVID. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a tough situation to deal with. Like um, yeah, I I don't really know what 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 else to say about it. Really, it's just um. It's just really, really messy. Um, and I, I'm interested to see if the Premier League player, the Premier League clubs, actually follow through with what they were saying they were going to do, and uh, I'm just play the players anyway because I Hopefully feel like Fred there's... doesn't let you play. That, that was about to say there, yeah. Like it would the, the only club I think would benefit from this is um is United because Fred wouldn't be allowed to play. 
<laughs> um, on on that topic, though, obviously, you know, I I try not to talk about United too much on this um podcast, but at the same time, it's the best thing I'm, I I it, it's probably the thing I'm best at talking about. Um, so Van Van de Beek earlier this week done a podcast with Rio Ferdinand. I don't know uh, if you've seen that. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, Taylor, Taylor's calling you the milkman, <laughs> <laughs> milk daddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, no. So he done a podcast with Rio Ferdinand this week, and he, um, they were talking about like his previous uh, positions. Um, so like, have you always been like so? Obviously, Van der Beek's best sort of trait as a footballer right now is like late arrival into the box. Uh, like make like Frank Lampard esque. I'm not. I'm not saying he's he's obviously that level, but like Frank Lampard esque in terms of just making that that yeah, late yeah, run into the box, getting on the end of things. Um. So yeah. Uh. That is. Um. That that they were talking about that on the Rio Ferdinand podcast. But then Van de Beek went on to say that he, originally in sort of his youth days he played as a number six. So that that really begs the question to me is why is he not been given an opportunity? Ahead of uh, the likes of Fred, who we see consistently make mistakes week in, well, I, week out. I think it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. The fact that he's not a ball one on midfield, even though he probably did play there for AX. It's just a different league, it's just a different mm-hmm. style. And as you see, if he's going to play beside someone like Pogba, he needs to be even Fred. Fred can't play beside Pogba. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Um, he just doesn't want the ball back. He's not, he's not going to be physical enough in the Premier League for it. And so, do you think United you know, need like a midfield destroyer then? Hundred percent. Yeah. They need a can. They need like, like a Kante esque or, or an uh, Ndidi. Or PSG, the gay, just a gay. For uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So one, yeah, yeah I, the, like a destroyer, him. a destroyer, yeah. 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 See, this is where like it's up for debate because although I would take a player like that easily, um, I feel like I feel like we we could definitely, I'm um, uh, like Van der Beek could be like a deep lion playmaker if that makes sense. So, yeah, but off the ball, it's just, it's just I know, I know, but and off the, off the ball, yeah, <laughs> that that that's the problem off the ball. But I feel I feel like. I feel like if you're if you have good positioning off the ball, you wouldn't have to like run like so. The thing that Fred gets praised for is oh like look how much he runs, but half the time he's fucking running because he's out of position and he's running to get back in the position because yeah. he's miscontrolled the ball or whatever. I feel like if if you have the football and intelligence of Van der Beek, you're in position most of the time. You don't have to make a dick out of yourself doing these sprints back and. Like making recovery Carrick. tackles yep. exactly like michael carrick was yeah, a, is the best Carrick. example he wasn't like a destroyer he was a he's a great footballer he made basically near enough every season he played he was making the most forward passes in the united yeah. team and he just like he, he was like the rolls royce of that midfield he just controlled it um and he was so good in the ball that no one else got an opportunity to get on the ball so i feel like van der Beek, he's definitely not michael carrick level but he could play that maybe play that type I, I, of role yeah yeah you have you have a point there but james in your chat there is spot on united should have done a deal for kelvin phillips oh yeah i would have taken calvin phillips in a heartbeat well, but might, i wouldn't take that on rice with kelvin phillips yeah i would take calvin phillips over that on rice i'm with you yeah. on that um, um just yeah yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> sam's just resub there <laughs> what does he guy, say some guy Better player than McDay player too. McDay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the resub, Sam. I appreciate you, mate. I told you to be in your best behavior when you're around here talking shit already, for fuck's sake. Love it. He's a cruise fan, ignore him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yes, so uh no, I feel like I feel like uh Van der Beek has definitely been overlooked in terms of that deep land playmaker role where he can just control the control the midfield. And games like tomorrow against Newcastle, I think that would be perfectly fine if you just if you were to play like Van de Beek, like that type of player in that position and just control the you're gonna have all the possession anyway, so you need a player who's actually good on the ball. Yeah, um, I get you. I get yeah. you. That's, uh, yeah. Fred would just be a passenger in that game. He's not good on the ball. He, he's he's not good at moving it forward. He's always backwards or sideways. He tries to make a run forward and he just falls over himself. Uh, I I've just lost all hope in him as you can see. So um, if you gotta sign one player then, one player from Man United right now in the whole world football, who is it? Oh, that's a tough one. Um 
the scats 10 years ago <laughs> um no 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 <laughs> right like I'll, yeah uh right now I, I i would probably still go for um i would probably go if if, if you're going for like the play style maker where I, i'm like the play the nice footballer who can like dominate the midfield that way i'll probably go for Verratti. yeah but if you're going for the destroyer it'd probably be obviously you can't get kante so he's out of the question and Didi would probably be the one i'd go for so yeah. i would take either of them obviously but uh, yeah in terms of like my my preference as a football fan is i like to see a midfielder and just, can just control the ball you see man city do it like i wouldn't really describe fernandinho as a destroyer because he doesn't really have the legs anymore he just controls the midfield dictates the temp dictates the tempo of the game um so like if you got like Verratti into the team, I feel like he would do that job as well. Oh, I get you, yeah, 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 definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. but yeah, no, enough, enough talk about United, obviously, because as I say, I usually tend to go on about them way too much, and then obviously, there's not everyone's a United fan, so it doesn't uh interest them. Um, but yes, as Gerald said, Fernandinho can actually tackle, whereas Fred can't. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to this game tomorrow, United Newcastle game, and like I was looking forward to not seeing Fred when I heard that they were doing the end of whole <laughs> red, the red list of countries, and then I found out they might be playing him anyway. So, um, yeah, interest. McDade is better than Fred and center. I'm better than fucking Fred and center mid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so um, he's better than Fred. <laughs> move it on then so another topic um this is probably going to bring up united again but we're not going to stay on it too long so another topic uh i had wrote down was um most likely young player to break through right now so on the topic of united and a number six i feel like the most likely young player to break through uh right now would be jimmy garner so like that, this would have to be someone who's not in the first team already. Sam, so Sam said, a uh, Emil Smith Rowe. I think he's already established in the Arsenal team, is he not? He's already better than half the Arsenal team. <laughs> um, so yeah, just uh, um, I haven't seen much of him to be honest. Ethan Galbraith's a great shout. Ethan Taylor, Gal- yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a baller. I feel like Ethan Galbraith and Jimmy Garner both play for the same club, though, or both out on loan from United. Yeah. I feel like Jimmy Garner just has the edge on Ethan right now, just because, like, I'm not saying he's a better player than Ethan. Def- like, they're definitely, like, on the same level to dictate tempo of the game. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's, um, it's, Jimmy has the edge right now, for sure, just because of how he pl- well he played on loan last year for Nottingham, and he's obviously back there right now. I don't know if this counts. Um, the boy from Liverpool, uh, Jones. Is he, Jones, is he Curtis a, Jones. Well, Curtis Jones. he hasn't. He hasn't really broke into the team yet. I guess he's he's obviously made appearances for them, but he hasn't broke into the team. So yeah, he hasn't broken through, but he looks he, he looks good. Yeah, no, he does. He, he does. Better. He looks good. When he leaves Liverpool, he'll be better. Obviously, it's it's easy enough to like talk about the top teams. Um, yeah. when you're talking about this, because I have a lot of players out on loan. Um. Harvey Elliott's another one as well. I think he's he he's actually starting to establish himself in the first team already. I think. Um, yeah. He looks very good. Oh, Gilmore from Chelsea. I'm just looking at it here as well. Forgot about him. He's in London, Norwich. Yes, the last another one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's, he's pretty pretty. True. Bino said Diallo. I'm a Diallo. Uh, again, that's you could you could list the big you could list the um the big players, uh or the big teams and the amount of players they have out on loan. You could you could list them for for, for ages, uh just because they have so much quality. Um, yeah, well, that's a great shoot. Basuma, I that kid. No, no, I know no, Connor no. Bradley. Yeah, I watched him. The other night when he came on for Northern Ireland, yeah, yeah they looked very yeah. calm, didn't they, for for an eighteen yeah. year old? Yeah, great, yeah. great shoot. It's just hard for him to get in that team at the moment because you've got Trent in that team already. So I don't really yeah. think you can... Unless nah, Trent maybe moves in the midfield or something. Um, <laughs> well, that's another thing we could actually talk about there because like, obviously we've talked about United quite a lot. Do you think Trent could move in the centre bit at any stage? No. No? What's no. your reasoning for it? Why do you not think he could do it? Um, I guess... Like, just, it's, too, it's too physical, especially mm-hmm. in midfield and... As you, as a, we spoke about, touched on already. Fred, Fred struggles with, and Fred 
Fred's more more attacker than Trent. Trent can tackle, and he doesn't track back. He's no intention of defending. Yeah, so you're yeah, him, you're right. You're going to have to put him as a number ten, which I just don't see happening. That's he's good in the ball, and he's he's best position is right back. You, yeah, you play him anywhere else, it's just. Nah. I think he maybe he could possibly move into like right mid or like just a right wing back. He basically a already right has a right wing back. Could, yeah, right wing back. I don't even think he could play right mid. He'd do a job, but he just wouldn't be the same. Yeah, yeah, true. I think Trent, like Trent, yeah, maybe right mid wouldn't be too good for him because he has to be further forward there. Whereas I feel like Trent's Trent's most effective, like deep, uh, deep on the wing, and he can get the early cross in because he yeah. puts it on. He puts it perfectly. Uh, he, his cross is perfect every time when he's when he's crossing from deep. It's that early cross he does. Um, so yeah, no, I, I would have to agree with you there. He doesn't really have the physicality from midfield. He definitely has the pace, but I think he would just get bullied. Um, yeah, uh, no, I just don't think he'd be interested in tracking back. He, he doesn't do it right back. Never mind fucking centre mid. Henderson bails him out all the time. I, I I've yep. all, uh, no, I always used to say Henderson was an average player, and I still, I, I still do think he's an average player. But you need players like that in your team who you're going to um put the graft in. So you see Trent going forward all the time, and it's always Henderson and back covering right back when he's when he's caught uh when they're caught on the counter. It's always him that's in the covering. Same for Robertson. He always come across and cover for Robertson too. And obviously even United, United's uh, majority of their success was from having players like uh, Darren Fletcher and Jason Park in the team. Players that weren't like technically gifted, but just put in a graph for the team. They're unselfish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, Henderson allows Trent and Robertson to get further up the pitch and provide assists and... Yeah, I don't. I don't think they would. Um, they would be as successful now if they didn't have. Um, like Fred, yep. Henderson. Are we still talking about Fred? Are we? Yeah. Um. <laughs> what's he saying? Fred just. Fred just struggles. Full stop. When there was no fans in the stadiums, Henderson, as much as I think he is shit, he was the most vocal in the middle for any team you get. Um, and that's what you need in a captain. One hundred percent, you need yeah, you need your captain to be vocal as well. It would obviously help Henderson even more if he was a good footballer. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say he has like tons of quality. He, he's decent. Like he he plays a nice forward ball sometimes, but most of his football and ability is just like calming the team down, sideways, backways passes. But it's off the ball that where where he he thrives. It's off the ball why he's in that team, and I, I feel like um. I don't really know where Liverpool go after they lose Henderson. Yes, they've got Fabinho, but it is, he's not as vocal as Henderson. He doesn't. He's not like a leader. So Henderson's in his like his early thirties now, isn't he? So where yeah, do they go after? Yeah. yeah, he's got a few, maybe a couple, yeah. few more yeah, years in him, like in that role. But yeah, um, Liverpool are still looking strong. I feel like they're definitely, I am. Um, they're definitely an outside shout for the title. Look, Taylor, I try and I try and be as on bass as I possibly can. I can tell you're a mank. I try and be as on bass as I can. I am a little biased, and you need that. You need that if, if you're a football you're fan. A uh, no, I'll, 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 I, if I wasn't, if I was completely biased, then I wouldn't be saying that Liverpool have a chance at the title. I'll be saying they're absolutely shite and they're going to finish sixth. Yeah. No, I, I don't think they'll finish uh yes sam got sam guy this header was in my chat last week and he was saying to me um arsenal are going to finish top six Ooh. that's that's a fucking conversation isn't it oh um fuck uh i, I don't know about... <laughs> I, do. I, I, I can't think the league i think the league's too strong this year they don't they, they won't arsenal won't get european football i think they're like eighth or ninth Eighth or ninth, they'll finish. They'll be lucky. They'll be, they'll be lucky to get top half, honestly. But well, name, I mean, name, name your top four. So name your top well, yeah. Me and Mason's obviously done this the other week. So oh, my right, top okay. four was my top four was United, City, um, Lever or sorry, United, Chelsea, City, Liverpool. In that order. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have United I had Chelsea first until with San Ronaldo and then I, I went into a whole conversation about how I think Ronaldo elevates the mentality of the team and like if you put 95% in on the training pitch when Ronaldo and Varane are there you're fucked like they, they're not they'll not uh, let you away with that 95% isn't good enough um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a, to it's a toss up between those four 
Yeah, I think I think just Van Dyke, the fact he's back is just uh I I fancy Liverpool strong women. Liverpool are a great shot for the title, honestly, but I feel yeah. like like that Chelsea game was the prime example of like what their problems are right now, and it's that they have to rely too much on Salah and Mane, and there's not really any like creators in their midfield. They don't have like a Bruno Fernandez or a Kevin De Bruyne. They they just basically been in that game a massive favourites, and Lukaku, Lukaku, that's all you heard. Lukaku is going to do this. Lukaku is going to do that. I don't know. I just think with Van Dijk back, he's easily the best centre half in the world. I don't know what I don't know who you were speaking to that was saying Lukaku this, Lukaku that, because I was saying to myself like when he played for United, the thing that he struggled with the most he scored a lot of goals for United. He was a good player for United. Yeah. Um very underrated. But uh the problem was the big games. He never showed up in the big games. And I wanted to I wanted him this like to put like a performance in. Obviously it's hard to judge him off it now because they went down to ten men, but um Van Dyke bullied him the whole game. Just completely building him off a ball the whole game. So yeah. uh, we'll obviously have to see uh how he gets on in, in future big games, but he still does have shins Arsenal's like trampolines. Top, finishing top six anyway. That's, yeah, no, that's that. Just to get back that point, there's no no, no no. Um yeah, no, another thing we had talked about, uh obviously outside of the top four was your outside shouts and uh we had we had Leicester, West Ham. I think and Everton were my my three. I I don't remember what order I had them in, but yeah, I feel like I feel Spurs, like there are the teams Spurs, Spurs, Spurs as well. Yeah, so I think it's again there. It's a toss up between Leicester, Spurs, West Ham, Everton. I think Everton are going to do bits under Rafa Benitez. As much yeah. as obviously a lot of Everton fans might might hate him being there because he's like a Liverpool legend. Um, he he, he he's going to get the best out of that team. He done. Yeah, they done the same manager. at Newcastle. He done the same at Newcastle. He just got the best out of the team with like with no facilities and no funds from the the owner. Um, but he's going to get that at Everton. So yeah, I think that's a really yeah. really good combo. What Paz is saying there, the, the, probably right. You don't have needs a wee bit of luck come the end of January. You're still you don't have any big injuries. Oh no, one hundred percent. Because you've seen you've seen the impact of Calvert Lewin getting injured last season. As soon yeah. as he got injured, they fell off. Badly, um, but yeah, uh, that's, that's just a wee bit of luck you need, though. True, yeah, every every team needs that. Yeah, Leicester's had bad luck the last couple of seasons. Yeah. They were on the finished top four and just got a mass amount of injuries, and uh, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. It. And as I as I said, their Spurs. Everybody would have Carrie Kane leave Spurs. Obviously, don't see them doing much. But now with him there, and he's no choice to stay. Yeah, true, true. I think like um that's another thing I actually wanted to talk about with my FPL team. So obviously last week you'd seen that I uh, had Sun in my team, yeah. um and I feel like he's gonna he's gonna continue to uh provide a lot of goals and assists. But I I at the, I had to just keep Bruno Fernandez in the team. I know obviously you took him out, so we're sort of like uh, opposing each other on that. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like as I said before, Bruno was gonna get a lot more space with Ronaldo being in his team to to operate in. Um, but it, it killed me to take Son out of the team because he the partnership he has with Kane is just unreal. They're looking they're looking very very strong this season. Spurs. Um, it's just the only reason that I put Sal in is because of fixtures as well. I just think United actually have pretty nice fixtures as well, but Liverpool's fixtures so e I just think it's so easy. Yeah, yeah. This this month the three games that they're they're playing, I just think it's. It's an easy, it's an easy nine points this month. From uh, come next month, will it will be different? But I don't know. I just, I'm just, I'm putting anybody back and from we Ronaldo and Lobby Bruno. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. Um, I, I still, I still, um, I have my concerns about Liverpool. Like, I'm not, say, I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to lose any of those games or anything. Um, I just have my concerns about them because obviously we've seen how Chelsea played when they went down to 10 men they had no option but to just sit back and defend and that's mm -hmm. what the that's what the smaller teams will do against Liverpool especially at Anfield I just yeah. did, I didn't see any creativity out of them and I didn't see a player that they had in the midfield who could just like dictate the game and create create <laughs> loads of chances so I'm, I'm I have my yeah. doubts about them just in that the sense thing that they're playing away to Leeds Leeds just they don't really need Leeds to create, Leeds. Cha Leeds create chances for you Goals for folks. 
in your home to Palace spoke about their renowned thumping pass every time they play them and yeah. then they play away to Brentford which Brentford are actually I, I actually I think that could be the bogey game out of the three to be honest because Brentford really? have kept clean sheets I think they've kept yeah. like three clean sheets on the bounce now I, I, if I'm not wrong maybe two and then I think maybe two yeah, clean have, sheets and then they two and conceded one yeah yeah yeah, yeah but, two um, and then conceded one so they're the, the type of like Brentford that's the type of team I mean that like Liverpool may struggle against because they need to actually create chances against those teams Leeds play like risky football so they're going to be able to smash them on the counter the same way United yeah. done they'll they'll leave gaps in the midfield but I have my worries about um about Liverpool's just creativity because they they had so much um time on the on the ball against Chelsea and it just it just didn't look like creating anything the only goal they got was from from the penalty so I I just I don't know we'll have to see how that pans out obviously but I, I feel like they still they're missing like a a piece of the jigsaw midfield like a Bruno or a Kevin De Bruyne or just someone yeah. who can create chances um <laughs> yeah it'll be interesting to see how that goes um but yeah though I, I don't really don't really know what else I could really talk about covering the FPL um without without talking about the the bigger teams too much so. <laughs> Taylor's in the chat talking about the Irish League. How Linfield yeah. is going to win the Premier League this year? Um, yeah, I'm just reading that there, and I'm not, I'm not liking it very much. To be quite honest, <laughs> I'm not going to get into specifics about Irish League because I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really watch much of it. Um, I know you're playing tomorrow against. Uh, who is it again? Warm point. Warm point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you began with a W. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say Wolves for a second. <laughs> um. Yeah, so with Irish League, um, as I say, I can't really go into specifics with it. One of the things that, uh, like, as a spectator of that league, back back when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of it, and then obviously I grew up and I realized, like, for me, I personally stopped watching it because the quality of the league wasn't like entertaining for me, especially when you've got teams like or the the club the games like the Premier League on you know you can watch that and it's high quality football um but obviously I want to see local football do well so what what would you say there's anything that can be done to sort of take the league to the next level and what would well, that next level be yeah well from when I first joined I joined I joined the league what must be five six years ago and to be honest the standard of the league then wasn't good it wasn't even known um for as you say, pretty football or teams that play football is really, really just rough and basically not like Sunday morning with your mitts, but like a better version. That's physical, that physical and dirty, and it wasn't nice to watch. But um, I think in the last five years, you've got teams like Glentorn, Larn, now Lumfield, they all do play football, and I think shown in Europe especially the standard yeah. of football is improved, especially from because the down south league is renowned for football, um. I think the up north league has just grew strong, stronger and stronger, and I think it's going to keep going like that. Um, I, but it, to answer your question, full time is the only way that the league's going to be better. We have three, four full time teams now. So who's the full time teams at the moment? Linfield, Larne, Crusaders, Lumfield, and Larne, Crusaders, and Glentorn, Larne, Lumfield, Crusaders. That's the four. Yeah, yeah, that's the four. Okay, that's okay. Four. So, uh, and I think you can, the only way it's going to get better is you same teams and. That's the only way it's going to be successful in, in, in a bigger scale. But and yeah. it just takes it that takes a lot of money. Yeah, so, well, that's true. Well, that, that's I think I feel like the short answer to what you just said there was that is money. Like the only way the league's yeah. going to get better is money. So like getting it on TV more often, letting allowing clubs to go full time. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's as. I I must I must go to a game soon again because I will as I said obviously my opinions are a bit outdated because I haven't been to a, a, an Irish league match for maybe a few years you now. To, so you need to watch where um where the entertaining team of the league. You're the entertainment, football, yeah. Yeah, you're the yeah, Man City the, of the league, are you? Yeah. Yeah, we're the, we're the football. I wouldn't go as far as to say we're more like a Leeds. <laughs> right, you're Leeds, right? Okay, okay. So you're basically you're getting the... you're playing good football, we're getting shit yeah. on then. <laughs> no, no, <we're, laughs> you're not a Leeds then. <laughs> um, nah, we we are we 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 play the best football in the league. Uh, I think that's e easily the best football in the league. But um, 
I think this year could be our year. No, well, I'm I'm pretty sure of it. So uh, Think, fingers crossed for you. City. Yeah, yeah. Um, t- my my friend Thomas in the chat there, just on the subject that we're we're talking about now. Um, he said full times killed Crusaders. So I just want to get his thoughts on that and why why he would think that because. I can't see any negative to going full time. I can't see I mean, it. I, I get what he's saying, but I don't think it's full time. I think that's an easy cop out saying full time's killed the cruise, the cruise when maybe to go full time aren't really a full time. Aren't aren't training full time? If if that makes sense. True. Not on as full time, but they're still not training full time. Well, that that's the thing about full time as well. So, like, when when you're in a club, uh, this is obviously me sp- uh, speculating here. So, crack me if I'm wrong. But when you're in a club and you're in part time football, I feel like you're you're more um, laid back about it, and you would go out with your mates and you would go for a couple of pints here and there, and you you know you'd still like socialize a lot. Whereas I feel like if you're in that full time environment, it it demands dedication to your sure. craft. You're absolutely spot on. Um, and if, if you don't put that dedicate, if you don't have that dedication, then like, so for example, if that Crusaders team have went full time and I don't have dedicated players, and I'm not calling any individual players out, but if you do not have dedicated players, then it's not going to, um, yeah. it's not going to work yeah. out. Well, that's, that's the biggest difference I've noticed in the league over the last five, six, seven years is the dedication. Like you can see, like there used to be a lot of overwit and I'd be one of the ones who actually carries a wee bit of wit. But seeing most of the players in the league, they look like athletes. A, a yep. lot of them. I'd say 80, 90%. You can tell they're physically fit. Um, but I'm just reading there. <laughs> I'm just reading. The All-Ireland League. I, 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 the All-Ireland League. Interesting think, topic. Yeah, it is a very interesting. And I think it is looking more... It's more, it is, it, it's more of a likely thing to happen just because of the money. Um. Obviously, who wants to go to Cork on a Tuesday night? Nobody. No, no. Like I, I feel like um, that's Nobody the only does. that's the only negative um point I I could see in an All Ireland League. Um, politics aside, guys. By the way, because I know we we'll have a lot of people on both sides here. So before you go in, they're like, "Oh, but I wouldn't want an All Ireland League because this isn't Ireland." <laughs> like none of that shit. Okay. Um, All Ireland League. I think it would be it would work financially. Definitely would work financially and it would bring more eyes on the league. But as as uh as Ta Ta rightly said, who the fuck wants to go to Cork on a Tuesday night? The, this, yeah. the Irish League, I'm not too sure what way it is down south. Um, but in Northern Ireland in particular, it relies on like um on fans coming to the game and ticket yeah. like ticket sales. So Yeah, Sam, I, I'm just reading what Sam's saying there, and he does have good points. Um I just think that if he, I think for even the Northern Ireland and Republic Ireland as internationals, they get young players through. I think it's better for the generations coming through if you are playing against better players. And the putting the two leagues together, I think it makes sense. You can do it, but again, it's all about money. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's all about money. As I say, the the only negative I can see to it, and the only uproar I can see to it, um, obviously ignoring all like the people that get political about it. Um, in terms of just like common sense, the only thing that doesn't make sense is is the traveling for the away fans. Um, so I don't really know what they're gonna do about that. But yeah, the I, I would be lying if I didn't say that it's 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 not looking it's it's looking likely to happen. Like I I I would say that we're probably heading more towards that direction than not. Um, I don't know if there's been any talks or anything between the leagues in terms of it actually yeah, there happening. Is. But... There's, there's, just been, there's been a load of proposals put forward and they're actually working on it still. Um, but it, it, it does, Sam, again, to get back to what you say, it kills small teams 100% of those. Teams yeah. like Dungannon, Carrick, they're just not going to be able to... It, it's only going to be full-time. That, and that's the whole point of it. It's You're going to look at 12 full-time teams. Well, that's that's on, on that... This is on this top. I I I thought this topic was going to come up, and I actually like. Um, I have to say, I'm I'm very happy with how everyone's responded to it because they're not being bitter about it, and it shows that we've got a community of uh people that just aren't um better bastards to be honest. So there's no really other way to put that. So thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Tata said about a, a cup with both sides, he would 100% love that. And the odd the odd trip down every other week would be good. Do you think maybe that could be an option where, like, the test of waters with it? We're yeah, gonna have, had, because they've they had, had cups that, like that before, haven't they? Yeah. Like the Satanta Cup. Yeah, they had the Satanta Cup. Well, that was unbelievable. That, that, that's actually a good shout. Again, um, they pulled the money out just because the money, they weren't getting... Teams from the north were actually sent and they're on their eight pings, they're on their twenties down and getting <laughs> yeah. six and seven no. And everybody in no the point team was it. betting there was no point of it. Everybody in the in the Northern Ireland teams were betting against their own team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, no I reckon like... we could pack that and we make a few quad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, but the Satanta, yeah, that's that's actually a very good point. You could do that maybe an end of the year, like the top a, a cup, a cup, a cup. He, Tata said he had some night when the crews won it, of course. Uh, it would, of course, it'd be the crews fan talking about the past, wouldn't it? <laughs> but yeah, no, an interesting conversation. I need I need to get the Irish League game, to be honest, and like actually have a look at how the teams play football now, because as I say, when I went to the, the games before, as the, the only games I would have went to is like I grew up a Linfield fan, so I would have only really went to like the the Linfield Glen Tour matches and stuff. And I feel like on, in those games, football still goes out the window in those games because it's just so like the rivalry and everything, and yeah, the, the teams get aggressive towards each other. And but I need to actually just go to like a normal game, just like a normal game week, just like Larn versus Warren Point or something, and just actually yeah. watch how the 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 leagues developed. Um. I'm glad to hear from obviously yourself playing in a league that you feel that the standards improving within the players. Um, but a point I want to bring up as well, just uh, this is nothing to do with the players, it's to do with the fans of the Irish League. So obviously we've got a lot of Irish League fans in the chat now. And as I said before, I'm very happy with the responses to this conversation. Um, but uh, a problem I had going to the games was this is more aimed towards the older generation and I'll not hold back with this. There's a, still a lot of like sectarian abuse, racist abuse, uh, whatever you have. There's still a lot of that in the Irish League. And I know that's, I know you could argue that's everywhere, but it's just like, it's way too, it's way too um common. I find that Irish, at Irish League games, and maybe that, maybe it's just a Linfield fan base. I, I don't want to sing out an entire fan base, but, Obviously, as I say, I grew up a Linfield fan, so it was always in the Linfield end. But even even just the last Irish League game I went to was about 2017-18, and it was the Boxing Day match, Linfield versus Glen Tor, and it was at the Oval, and I was standing in the away end with the Linfield fans, and it was a, a black man playing for Glen Tor, and, and I heard someone behind me call him, like, the N-word and this and that. And like nobody reacted around to like what he was saying, and I I just felt like I was the only one there with like my fucking head screwed on, and I just turned around in him, and I just stared at him, and he just stared back at me, and it's like he knew he knew that he was in the wrong, and like I I just don't understand it how um how you, like, as I said, McHugh's obviously saying like that's across the board happens at Brandywell too when we play the Blazer Glens like. And I, I, it could be the same in Scottish football. It happens in English football. You see it everywhere. It happens in the Premier League. But so obviously, like racism and everything, is still a big problem in football in general. But I just find it more common along with the sectarianism in Irish league football, which I don't understand because even Linfield have like Catholics playing for the team, and yet you're you're sitting calling like Cliftonville fans like you know you know what you're calling them. I yeah. just don't understand it. What I, What's your thoughts on that? I understand what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I honestly think, obviously, it's to do with a lot of fan base. I honestly think in England, it's worse. It's worse in England, to, yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly do. Like, we, we have Fudger, uh, Fudge Shuey, who's obviously a young black lad. And mm -hmm. see, to be honest, he hasn't, I, I've, I, I think maybe once, maybe once he's he's ever been called anything but uh, there's people in the league like the likes of Connor Devlin or Jade Only who do get a lot of abuse for other things mm -hmm. but I think I think the sectarian thing is is is, is definitely in Northern Irish football yeah but um I think I think you can deal with it. I don't think that's a big deal but it's the racism it would be a massive thing and I don't think that it might still be here and there and the players are unaware of it but as you say if you're a fan stand and you hear it it's 
is pretty bad. But I'd say England, just because of the fan group, the bigger fan bases, it would be a lot more common. Yeah, and allowed, yeah. A lot, a lot more allowed. It'd be allowed a lot more, I reckon. Well, there's still that mob, mob mentality in football. That's the yeah. problem. So, like, yeah. if you've got, like, one or two people, um, or not one or two, obviously, if you've got, like, a big group of, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the words, just, like, you know, like, the, the Green Street kind of vibes, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, the, you've got, the have you got, walls kind of yeah, 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 if, you, if yeah. you've got those guys in your fan base, like, I don't, like, there's probably, like, what, 50 of them, and you think about the amount of fans in a stadium, it's, like, 20, 30,000, 40,000, but yet a hundred people can make a lot of noise and then paint a bad picture for an entire fan base, which is which is unfortunate. And to be honest, I need I need to call myself out a bit because I maybe shouldn't let like because as I said, that was one person at that game who said the N word, and I let him his opinion affect um affect my whole opinion on the on the the, the entire league's fan base, which is a, a bad thing from my side. Maybe you know I should I should call myself out on that and say I shouldn't do that, but. As I say, it's 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 more just a sectarianism as well. I hope that that's a problem within Northern Ireland, and that's a whole different conversation. Um, but that that's basically like a lot of the reasons why I would have been put off going to the Irish League games because I actually wanted to go and watch football. And one, I didn't see any football being played, and two, there was just people that weren't there to, to watch football; they were there to abuse. So yeah, yeah, and there there still is that. Of, obviously, there's always going to be there's always going to be them. <laughs> I'm just saying, Taylor. I'll be flying up here so so winter. You need to shout loud. Taylor, there was no fans on there, so I could hear you. Lad. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fucking chairs in that stadium, isn't it? Fuck's sake. <laughs> no, um, but I, 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 it's definitely, it's definitely growing. And as you, you need to get the game. I'll get you a ticket to a match, and you can come. You can. I'll get you a alarm top. You sport alarm. Sport alarm. I, here, I, I don't. I, I wouldn't say like support any teams in the league. I, I like. As I say, I grew up a Linfield supporter, and I like to see them do well. But um, but obviously that one experience sort of put me off it. Um, which is unfortunate. But what's but they it, what's deserved it. <laughs> True, Sam. True. <laughs> Sean O'Neill and Dakir, my two fave all time Crusaders players, in there from uh the so called other side. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like people like you, Thomas. Like you're um you're open minded, so like it's not going to bother you, but. I don't know, like the the people like the, it's just idiots. As as Sam said earlier, there's idiots in every fan base. Um, and unfortunately, they do paint a bad picture in general. Um, yeah, like they, they they literally are idiots. They're insulting an entire like uh culture of people, but yet that culture of people are playing for the football team that they're supporting. So yeah, it's it's just stupid. Um, but yeah, no, I might need to take you up on that offer for sure and actually get down and watch a bit of football and, and see how it's actually progressed. Um. One more thing just on the whole Irish League topic, and it's a more of a positive thing actually, is I'm actually I'm liking the see I'm loving that there's actually like a pathway. It seems like there's a pathway now for younger players to obviously the Irish League still isn't at that stage where like it's a league that they, those players are gonna stay in, they're always gonna go over to England as as it stands. But it's nice to see that there's actually a pathway for those players, like like Shane Lavery, for example, is an example. He kept buying the goals in for Linfield last season, and then just you seen earlier in the week there he was starting for Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's a, like a, if you had a asked me this question a year ago, eighteen months ago, would he play for Northern Ireland? I would have said never in a million years. Mm -hmm. But it just shows you fair play to as you say, the, the league as a whole, um, I think the young players like Shane's benefit coming back from England mm -hmm. and playing full time football. Um and I I can only see it progressing with teams going full time. Like Lauren have a see like an academy and now and there's young kids just coming through as well. Um but seeing Shane Lavery do that, it's not it's not even for younger. There's people like myself who he's actually inspire he's inspired a lot of people. Just to show that we better extra hard work that he's put in. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're at Texan. That kid was playing against us fucking six months ago. Now he's torturing centre halves in international football, which is. He's torturing the Switzerland centre backs yeah, and they're playing for like, is, yeah, top European clubs. Exactly. And that's. that's Nothing to do with the league. Um, but it just shows you that there is opportunities there if, if you're going to work hard enough. And he just proved it. Yeah. Uh, he's, that's... The, he's not the only one as well. He's, no, there's, no. There's so many more. That's done the same as him. Uh, not is, as quick. There was that. I can't remember. Is I think it's like Sykes or something. Mark is that Sykes, his name? Yeah, Mark yeah. Sykes. He's away yeah. over to England as well, isn't he? He, he scored. Or... He scored two weekends ago as well. For uh, yeah. I 
Uh, I can't mind who plays for. Yeah, see, I, I I don't like pay enough attention to know what clubs and all they've moved to and stuff, but I'm just saying Oxford, I think McHugh said. I think it might be Oxford, Oxford. you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but it's it's just nice to see. Um, It's just nice to see, like, players actually getting more of an opportunity. James has brought up another topic here, and this is obviously one of your good friends he's talking about. So on this subject, he's asking, how does Liam Boyce not play for Northern Ireland? He does. He does. Uh, James, actually, he... For family personal reasons he, he didn't play but I, would, I think what you're asking how does he not play regularly um i don't know because i don't know either he's unbelievable I don't know. he's unbelievable maybe he just doesn't suit the way in the northern ireland because he's the complete opposite from he doesn't shane put Lavery. in like the work rate like shane Lavery, nah. but he's, he's but that's he, the thing i feel like if you've so got him I so feel like class. yeah, I feel like if you've yeah. got Liam boys in your team you should be like you should be making it work for him because he's just got that quality um, yeah, that, that, and that, that is the thing. They, they would pick a Josh McGuinness, and that's no disrespect to Josh. Josh is just a hard worker, a Shane Lavery, who are basically going to run their nuts off, whereas Boyce is just that but but a class. Yeah. I feel like I feel like you should have like hard workers around him and then just have him as the vocal point in the team, and like you, you need that class to finish off chances. And me being obviously a big Northern Ireland fan, I think the one thing I'm critical of Northern Ireland with is... um is they will work hard and they will like play for the shirt which is fantastic traits to have but when it comes down to it they never have that that um finishing touch they never have it and i feel like if you have liam in the team as the vocal point with hard workers around him and he has that bit of class like i think he's the type of player they're actually missing so yeah i can understand james point in terms of like he should be yeah, playing I regularly I think it's because Northern Ireland is always the underdog. So they have yeah. a striker who, as you say, we have a bit of class and he's not running about like a headless chicken, let's just say. <laughs> you know, and that's what Northern Ireland has needed over the past twenty years, thirty years, whatever. But mm -hmm. um but and he Jesus, that man was unbelievable. But uh no, I I you have to make room for him one way or another. I think yeah, I'm on I'm on board with that. As I say, like I think if you get enough hard like hard workers around him, around him, yeah, spot yeah, on, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, but uh, Ryan McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> who's wanting to talk about Ram? I, I know Ryan seems like a good lad, but I haven't watched enough of his football or anything, so I can't really talk about him that much. Yeah, well, he, Ryan played for Northern Ireland a lot of times. I know, well. he, I know he's he did. Yeah, I know yeah, he did. He's, he's just saying, he's saying that you can't. Thank God I don't have to lend the money anymore. Um but yeah, no, just back to the topic of the young players coming through. I think as I say, it's really positive to see like a lot there's a, a load more uh players that just got listed there. So Gavin White was one of them, Joel Cooper is another one, um Bobby yeah. Burns, Jamal Lewis obviously didn't come through the Irish League, but he's he's a great player, so that's a great shout. Um but Stuart there, Dallas, Stuart Ooh, Dallas come through the Irish wow, League, you know, and see, he he's that the thing I love about him as well is he came through from the Irish League when it was like we were talking about earlier, a very physical league and not like you didn't play football. So there's always been that pathway, but I feel like this is more of a pathway now because like rather than just because at that time it was only Stuart Dallas come up through it's the it's league. More regular, it's, it's more, more regular, regular now. Like we're now talking about like Gavin White, Mark Sykes. Um, yeah. you know, it, it is a, Lavery, yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, is there just the reason why I brought brought it back to this topic is because I was going to ask you: Is there any young players at the moment in the league or in Larn even who have just who are standing out to you in terms of like they have that quality to to move abroad? Yeah, or break um, an international someone thing. Someone actually said it. Yeah, Taylor's just said it. There's a kid, Matty Lustig for Larn. He's a striker. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I have a soft spot for him. Mm -hmm. Um. But this kid just has everything. Um, I think he has. A, he just has the massive. He was actually away with the Northern Ireland 19s there, but he got COVID, so he couldn't play. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate. Um, and then he came back, and he was actually meant to play the game for start the game because I had COVID as well, and Ronan Hale had COVID, so he was meant to start his first, sorry, second start for for Lauren on Saturday, but he got COVID, so he couldn't play. Unfortunate. So, um, yeah. yeah, but he he is. Um, he's definitely one who I can think I can think off the top of my head. Is a very, very, very good chance of going going to England very soon. Yeah, yeah. So well, he's obviously brought it broke into like the Northern Ireland under nineteens as well. So yeah. he's not far yeah. off the international team, do you think? Or yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He's a couple of years yet. Um, what age say, is he? Uh, he's 
18. Eighteen. Okay. Okay. So, so I, need re- I, I need to retire, and then he'll be uh, he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be playing regularly then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have an all. I have an all year left, and that's him. Uh, what are you? Um, obviously, like you're one of the more experienced players in the squad. So, would you be more? Would you be more like? Would you be helping the young players? Do you think like would directly, or even just them watching you? Do you think you you sort yeah, especially, of especially strikers, especially you sort of have like a like a love for just because you remember what it's like. I remember what it's like playing for Derry when I was 16 coming through and there was a striker who was a fucking asshole and then there's one who was really sound and you always yeah. remember the sound one you just always do who put their arm around you and helped you along. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's, that's what you try and do for, um, especially for kids <laughs> like Matty. Like. I was just laughing at Thomas there. That's a nice way to say he's old as fuck. I didn't say he was old as fuck. It was you that said that as well. Okay. 30. He's only 30. That's young. Ta ta. Tata, you already look 30 for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> go on, tell us who it is, Davey. No, no, no. Wait, James already he already said who it was. He was saying um it was uh Matty Lusty yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um or no, I think James is asking who the sound guy, who the sound striker was that brought you through at Darry. The, the sound striker's Kevin McHugh, who's a Kevin Derry McHugh. and Fun Herbs legend. Yeah, yeah, but um I'll not, I'll not name the. the no, 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 you're not. Name, no, 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 no. It's not going to that. I'll leave that. I'll leave that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, no, that that's perfect. Then, yeah. Um, as I said, I just, I just wanted to. Is there any? Is there any young players from other clubs that's caught your eye? I said a lot. Or obviously, like on the topic of young players. So, um, you've obviously named one within Larn that's caught your eyes. Or any outside of Larn, like playing yeah. in the league now or about to break through or. Um, th- th- there is a there is a couple there. There's a couple. Fields one. Um, Aaron Donnelly for Cliftonville is another. Um, they're all Northern Ireland twenty ones. Um, they so they have a serious they have a serious chance of, of doing big things as you say in international level as well. Okay. Okay. Own own tool from Derry who doesn't play in our league he plays in the Down South Fleet. Yeah, he's yeah. But... Ca- he's actually the captain captain of the Derry team, and I think he's like twenty. That's so unreal. So he's yeah, got yeah, leadership quality already. Yeah, yeah, he's played loads of times for twenty ones. He um, he uh, he's an R boy who's who looks like he's going to be another player going to England. Going the Hearts, because and he's going the Hearts soon. Going the Hearts, yeah. Okay, going. okay. Um, and then one last topic. Uh, I think as I said, we we covered all the FPL stuff. Um, already. So if, if you've got any questions, um, for us. That we haven't sort of covered already it can be fpl related or obviously it can be on the topic of irish league because we've um we've already we've been talking about that for a while now if you've got any other questions get them in the chat and we'll try and like take a few questions at the end of the stream but one more topic is sort of just come up in my head based on the conversations we've had is obviously we're talking about all these young players coming through um at like cliftonville larn crusaders whoever it may be um and they're in the under under uh nineteens or under eighteens or whoever it may be in Northern Ireland. Um, what's your thoughts on the whole um situation with so for example, if a player plays for Cliftonville, they're more than likely from a nationalist background, um, which is fine, but they're playing for Northern Ireland. There's still that risk of them switching to like allegiance yeah. allegiances to the Republic. What's your thoughts on that? Would you it's obviously well, a controversial topic, so there's not really like any yeah, wrong answer or right answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I played for both, so uh, mm-hmm. as you say, and I think not back when I was coming through, you would always pick Republic Ireland because Republic Ireland was better, bigger, right? Uh, uh, so so to speak. Um, but now I don't I don't see why you would. I think you're on the same you, level now. I and, and I don't see the reason why I think you have more chance playing for Northern Ireland than you do Republic because the a lot of English players say they're from a Republic background when they're not. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Their, their great great grannies play for fucking. I think it's it has, as as says, it's becoming less of an issue because of the. Because of like, there's a more of a balance within the two teams yeah, now. It, definitely, but um, Republic still, as you say, uh, even like the Declan Rice thing for Republic Ireland, that that was just a lot of English players are doing that just to play international football, so they see Republic Ireland as their. Is their path to play international because they've no chance for England. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But if you're playing Irish League and you're a young kid, I don't see why you would go play for Republic. If you're playing in Irish League, it just wouldn't make sense unless 
you're from that background. Unless you're from you know that I mean? background, I think that's yeah, the only yeah, reason. That, yeah. I think now, even now the 18, 19, 20 year olds, I don't think anybody would be that like pushed. I don't think some families might be, but if you're talking 20 years ago, it's it's different. Yeah, yeah. I think, it's, I think now it's more just you pick where you grew up. And I think a lot of people from Northern Ireland would do you pick Northern Ireland. Yeah. I think the, the only problem uh like from looking from the outside I have of it was um so for example, if you have a player coming through, you know, from Northern Ireland, but they're from that background where they would edge sort of more towards the Republic of Ireland, I just don't think they should be playing for the Northern Ireland youth teams in the first place if they already have it in their head that like they want to play for the Republic. Most of them use it as like a pathway to the Republic of Ireland team. And I think that's where the issue more lies because obviously there's a lot of funding that goes into um like the the Northern Ireland youth teams from the IFA. And it's, it's near enough as like they're putting in that funding just for them to fuck off to the Republic of Ireland team. So I feel like there should be some sort of like rule in place. And I know obviously there's been um like there's been issues in courts and everything with this before in the past, but there should be some sort of rule in place where like by a certain age you have to make the decision what country you're gonna play for. Um and declare for that. And if you don't get into that team when if you don't break into that team, then it's like it's on you. You shouldn't have the option of like just switching between based on like what team is better it should be because like you want to play for that team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, just, it's a bit I'm of a tough looking, one. I'm just looking at what Sam said. Uh, yeah, Northern Ireland is statistically better over the last 10 years. Um, yeah, I, I don't know down to the stats, but I'm just saying it's only in the last three, four, five years you would actually say that Northern Ireland and Republic Ireland are left. I think before that, everybody would have said that Republic Ireland had better players, mightn't have been a better team. But they definitely attracted better and bigger name players from Premier League teams, where Northern Ireland were more Championship and League One players. Yeah, yeah. If that, if that makes sense, where a lot of Premier League players who weren't top Premier League players, but they were playing for likes of fucking Norwich or I don't know who, and and they were playing for Republic Ireland, mm -hmm. but they were English and they were just saying that, like John from Walters. Yeah, just, yeah. Have you seen, seen that in chat? Um, obviously Thomas makes the point of like if you if you it's just for them to get game time, so you can't really blame the young players who are just wanting to play as much as um they can. And like I understand that point of it, but as I say, just in the in the long run, it hurts the national team. Um, it, well, it's, it hurts more the AFA because it's obviously a one way system. It's not like someone from the Republic of Ireland can like choose to play for Northern Ireland. It's only it's only it's a one way system. Um, so as I said, it, it's just a. Uh, the the only problem I have with it is I don't I wouldn't want the IFA wasting their funding on a player who's just going to eventually leave them anyway. Um, I feel like there should there should be definitely like by sixteen or like at sixteen you should be asked like what what country you're going to declare for and then just make that decision then. And if you don't break through to the team, that's on to you. Be. That that used to be the way where you have you played a competitive game for that's it yeah under twenty ones have you played at under twenty one level at a competitive um level that you had that was what you choose and that was for me coming through mm -hmm. that, that because that's what so the rules only changed in the last ten years I feel like well I, I I'm not exactly I I will be honest like I'm not um a hundred percent familiar with what the rules are at the moment but your man connor um what do you call him the guy the right back that come on for northern ireland the other day uh the liverpool young youngster bradley connor bradley um yes he came on the other day and the commentator had said like he's that this was a competitive appearance he was making for the senior national team and the commentator had said that he still needs to make a couple yeah, more yeah, before I actually, he I, I i you're right he did say that so like I don't understand that because surely in my eyes, if you make at least even just one competitive appearance for the senior national team, I think you're already locked in at that stage in my eyes. I don't think you can, you should be allowed to switch. Whereas I think as the rules are at the moment, I think he can still realistically switch to the Republic if he wanted to. So that, yeah, that's where the problem lies for me. That's scandal. not right. That's scandalous. That, and that it, is scandalous. It, yeah. And it's, that, do that. And this, it was the same for Rice. Did Rice make a competitive appearance for the Republic? He, I don't know if he did. I don't know if he actually made a competitive. I think it was just friendlies he was playing, I think it wasn't it? Been a friend. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But um, 
gradation was uh, the same. Yeah, it has to be a full one. Yeah, it has to be has to be a full international, yeah, yeah. Um, Sam's also said Laporte done the same, which is true. Laporte went from uh, France to Spain, wasn't it? And he'd already yeah. made competitive appearances for France. But so. no, I think his, his was because he became a citizen of Spain. Um, Spain, yeah. So what, what, 10 years? So he yeah. probably basically lived his whole, whole life in Spain. That's fair, but I feel like if he's made a competitive appearance for France, then... Oh, did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, he played for France. So he, 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 com, wow. yeah, like competitively played for France, and uh, and Diego Costa it, did it too. Yeah, he did it from Brazil, didn't he? It, it happens all over. Like obviously, it's not just like a Northern Ireland Ireland thing. I think the only reason why Northern Ireland is talked about so much of it is because one, it's a one-way system, and two, it's more common. Um, yeah. but but yeah, that definitely happens all over the the place. So I think it's hard to just get that it seems to be like there's a universal rule for it but then when it comes to like northern ireland ireland there's not really any way you can deal with it because it's just it's always going to be like a taboo subject it's going to be tough yeah but it's not as you see there it's not just you know what i mean it's not just northern ireland republic ireland but i think it's it happens more frequently yeah i think that's especially, the thing that highlights it more. I, I think it's a majority of english players that's that does it to be honest. <clears throat> yeah yeah it's definitely more the english players that do it but like um, McHugh had obviously said earlier about how like he feels that um like the foreigners in the national team has hurt the national team and that that is a good point like I, I can like hurt the, because they're not playing for the shirts they're just there to like get game time yeah. but um put themselves in the shop window that that's all yeah yeah that's all it is yeah absolutely nothing to do with game time no no uh, whoever th- if anybody thinks that it's not it's literally if you play inter- international football. You, you, there's an extra couple of million on your price tag. Fact. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. If you can like say the the club you're selling a player to, like this is an international player, yeah, hundred percent. It adds a couple of million. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think at the same time, no, there's been a lot of like successful English players that have played for Ireland too. So it it's hard yeah. to actually, it's hard to just like put one statement on it and leave it at that Sam, uh, Sam had some nail in the head there if you're not good enough to play for England and your granny's fucking granddad it's spot on but that's yeah. the thing about Declan Rice Declan Rice never thought he was good enough then all of, a, all of a sudden he had an unbelievable year and got the choice where he shouldn't have had the choice I think that's the problem yeah 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 um, I mean, as I say, if I don't know if he made a competitive appearance. If he did make a competitive appearance and then realized, oh shit, I have the choice, and then backtracked, I don't think it should have been allowed at that stage. But if he's only playing friendlies, I have no issue with it personally. But that that's where it comes to like just opinion on that stage, you know. Um, there's still pictures of him with an Ireland shirt, so it's a bit of a weird situation. Um, but yeah, no, that that's pretty much like all I've got to say on that. If it's, unless you want to add anything. No, no, uh, Taylor just asked, would I play for Northern Ireland? I would fucking uh, drive straight to Windsor now and just jump on the pipe slot. Yeah, of course. Um, um, I, I love that, though. As, as I say, like, I, love, um, I love how uh, open, uh, open people are just like, playing for the national team no matter what now. So, um, yeah, that, like, that, no that, matter that, background that would, and that everything. Would be, that would be... Um... That would be a serious achievement. I, I would be fucking. I would be an ult- ultimate achievement. Achievement. Mm-hmm. For me. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um. Yeah. Is, is there any? Um. Obviously, like I know that not everyone in this. There's a lot of Northern Irish people in the chat. We're dominated with Northern Irish people, so I do apologize to any like uh, of my like English American friends or whoever else is in here for you know going on about Northern Irish football for a while. But we'll have to talk about it. We'll have to talk about it. Um. But yes, uh, was there any questions you guys had for us at all? Like any more questions you would want to ask? <laughs> I'd still give you stick in a Northern Ireland top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gives me stick as well, don't worry, <laughs> mate. Thomas could tell you loads of things he's called me. Uh, so Thomas and Sam, they're from uh, my, well, I don't play for them anymore, but my football team I used to play for. Um, I wasn't very good, Davey. I wasn't very good at all. That was our wee local pub team, you know, so... But I tell you what, you it, lad, here, you I begged Sam a few times, like, so. <laughs> what type of milk is that? Um, I think it's semi skin, Peter. <laughs> um, here, you know what, though, another, just while we're waiting for a few questions um, to come in, um, another topic I just thought of, 
off the top of my head is the ticket prices for that Northern Ireland game the other day. What the hell is that about? Like, was it like I, 52, 62 pound or something it was, wasn't I, it? I, I, it looked and I think looks in your chat, that was an absolute... I don't know how people paid that, honestly. Yeah, look, there's 62 pounds. 62 pounds. Sam was at the game too, yeah. Sam 62 pounds. So you usually, you usually actually know more than me. Why are you paying 62 pounds to go to a match when you can watch it? And don't get me wrong, I'd rather watch football live. It's just a better... The atmosphere is the not, thing you go for yeah, for the Northern Ireland yeah, games. But 62 pounds? Fucking hell. It's That's... it's the best um it's the best atmosphere I've ever been in as a football fan or apart from obviously being in a Stratford end but in, in terms of, like in, like the Northern Ireland fans like that just create such a great atmosphere and I feel like the AFA are just taking advantage of that because they know that the the fans love being in that atmosphere so much that they're just like well the we know that they're going to pay these prices now saying that the match sold out but it only sold out an hour before kickoff. Yeah. I feel like if the tickets are back to the regular prices of like I think I think it should be a maximum forty, forty five. Maximum. Jeez. And even that's even that's a lot. I I, I honestly think that, but I, I don't know there has to be a reason. There had to be a reason. Yeah, yeah. Um well it was the first game back was it was the first game back uh at Windsor's like since after COVID, was it not? So maybe they've just like milked the fuck out of it. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, probably... but I, I just, as I said, I just don't think it should be taken um advantage of the uh of the fans like that because they know that they're gonna they know that they're gonna want to go into that atmosphere and uh they've just they've just milked them completely. So yeah, I, I, to put it in perspective, I'm going to just just in case I haven't told anybody, I'm at Old Trafford tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think you told everybody that. The worry. ticket costs forty quid, so I'm going to a Premier League game. And it costs the ticket costs forty quid, and Northern Ireland are out here charging sixty two pound for a nil nil game at Windsor. Like, I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. Um, but yes. Uh, so I think Tata had a good question for you here. So, um, who is the best player you've played with or against? Um, best player I've played with is Paddy McCord. Uh, I've seen that he was that man like that uh, man was uh, as I, I just uh, right? and he was in the team as I said I played in the team with a dickhead striker he was in the team right so right because he's the nicest lad ever um, yeah but he was something else he was proper when you see when you say like mess I'm getting goosebumps here see like no like, like you say that remember that goal for Northern Ireland where he just ran through uh, everybody uh, <laughs> like live like that before the man was just scarily good yeah Sam said he um, scored a hat trick against him at under 16's level I'm sure he did Sam Sam's one of those type of players Davey were like uh, oh well if I didn't do my knee I would have been across the water playing football you know <laughs> like he's one of those ones so he is uh, um, Paddy McCourt yeah Paddy McCourt and who, who, who would be the best player you played against um against oof um, or even his toughest. Uh, there's a there was a kid who would play a Trabzon sport, um, Turkish team. He was a Argentinian under 21's captain. He right. was something else. Um, I can't even remember his name, but I'll never forget him. Just uh, bullied you there, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, lad, he was just a oh, lad, he wore a wee bandana and all. <laughs> I just want, I just wanted to give him a big kiss after the match. Hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks for giving me a run around there for ninety minutes, lad. <laughs> It's like, you know, Davey uh, scored against, uh, I can't even pronounce that team's name, Tram, Tram, Zons, Tram, Tram Zonspor. Do you, not, do you not know them? No, Turkish I, I know who they are. I know who they are. I just can't pronounce the name. I know they're Turkish Tram team. Zonspor. Tram uh, Zonspor. Tram Zonspor. Talking about experiences, talking about uh, their patches below, like, um, so when you go on, you go underground, and mm -hmm. their patches like a cauldron. It's like a dome over, it's like round and toppy. Hi, and their fans, Jesus, that is a scary, scary place. Never want to go there again, ever. Never. No, Jesus. it's a dangerous, The Turkish dangerous. fans, the Turkish fans yeah. are intimidating, and they're yeah. fucking passionate about the game. I we get escorted in and out of the game. Like, <laughs> Jesus, I wasn't, I wasn't a nice place. That's madness. Um, 
But yeah, no, uh, we'll, we'll take like a, oh, Kyle's just put in the YouTube link in the chat, but you, you know, you, Kyle, you've been in here enough, I know you need permitted to put links in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, so um, let me just see if there's any more questions here. Tata won a game against uh, University of Ulster tomorrow. Center back was a brick wall when we played the other week. Billy the fuck out of me hooked at half time. Thomas, you're you're all you're shite though, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. Um Yeah, that that's far enough. Um let me just see if I've missed any questions. Thomas, I think we'll I'm we'll take a couple up. more. We'll take a couple more. I'm just double checking the chat here because there's so many messages coming through. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Who did I play for? Taylor, I played for a rooftop. They're just like a local team there. That's just a bar club. It's just more for banter with the boys, you know? What um, am I doing after a retire, Taylor? Um, that's a good question. I am going to coach and manage. I'm going to be the best manager ever in Irish League. <laughs> I fucking love the... Um, love the... Ever. Love the ambition. Confidence. Confidence, lad. Yeah. Have you, have you done your coaching badges and everything then? Or are you yeah, working on I'm them? Just I'm just in the process, lad. Love that. As I say, Love I'm only 30, lad. I have another good six months left, me yet. <laughs> <laughs> six months. <laughs> um, and then I think I've seen one more question in there. Um, Here's one. Toughest Irish League defender Davy has come up against. Ooh. Ooh. Fuck. Um, in recent times, I'll Jimmy. It's definitely not Jimmy Gallagher. It just does not have to. It's just not Jimmy Gallagher. <laughs> Hopefully, he's not watching this. Uh, Jimmy, if you're watching, you understand why it's not you. Not you understand why. Um, uh, in recent times, I would say the center half for Glen Torn. Center half, uh, the current uh, center Luke, half for Glen yeah, Thorne. Yeah, Luke McCulloch. Luke uh, McCulloch. He's, uh, yeah, he's he's a, he played for Northern Ireland as well. He's a he's a Rolls Royce. I think he's very very good. Okay, okay. Luke, Sam, Luke, you have a good Luke, night there. Luke, it's me. The guy must have scored about a hundred goals against Lumfield last <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't watch a lot of um, Irish league football, but because like, I've always seen you banning the goals against Lumfield, you love it. Yeah. My mum's yeah. a big Linfield fan, and I remember I think it was last season you were playing. I think you were playing them when you scored. I think did you? You, yeah. did, you scored. Yeah, it, yeah. Scored, yeah, scored two. It was that I remember you saying we were. We were ah, because my mad, my like, mad. Ma you said, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, I remember. I, remember I tweeted this. about it. Then I was like, my yeah, mad is yeah. fucking raging at you. I <laughs> screenshot at <laughs> the messages. But yes, so we've got a couple more questions here, then, and then we'll we'll move on to we'll we'll just we'll wrap it up. So um. Don't worry, it's like I'm raging when he scored against Coleraine all the time. <laughs> That's Bino. Um, <laughs> Bino. Uh, Bino, lad. I like you too. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, one of the questions here was uh, Davy best striker last 10 years in the league. Well, it's obviously Davy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, last 10 years? Uh, Joe Gormley. Okay. Okay. Um, no, I think that was the only. Oh, uh, and then Paz. Uh, as I said, have you set yourself a, like a goal target for this year? Uh, this year, um, I don't really do targets, Paz, to be honest. Um, I don't really, I don't like putting that, I don't like putting pressure on myself. And if I do, it's just, I don't like saying it out loud, if you get me. You're more for like the team, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I have a number in my head that I, I know I want to hit, but I don't tell people because I don't like that. Yeah, you don't like putting it out there, and if you don't hit it, yeah. then you're, it's held against yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I get that. Exactly. I get that. No but worries. High. But it's high. <laughs> well, people are, people are flying in with the questions now. Um, how good was Ryan McBride, considering he didn't uh, play youth football at all? Yeah, well, as you say, like, like see, as you, you were just saying there, like, you play with your mitts on a Sunday, and you were no mm -hmm. good. Ryan McBride from Derry, he actually done that, and he came the Derry team under Stephen Kenny, the now Ireland manager. Mm -hmm. So for him to do that, it's, it's a bigger jump than Shane Lavery's made. He's came from That's playing with and then uh, he was on the verge of playing for Ireland's fucking national team. Like That's incredible. That's crazy. That's crazy. God, God rest his soul. Yep. Um, and then uh, let me just see what other questions we'll have. Have you got any good top swaps? 
<laughs> uh, I don't think Manny's swapping the Irish league. Uh, look, I got the kid that uh, played for that Passos uh, that was meant to sign for Arsenal. I don't know if he actually did sign or not for Arsenal. Um, but I got his top, just in case he did. Fair, fair. Um, if Davy signed for the cruise, I'll run onto the pitch and two foot him myself. That wasn't a question. That was more of a threat. That okay. Just... That was a... <laughs> that's, just... <laughs> that's not a threat. That's a promise. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how... Callum, what about Colin Coates? Are you, are you happy with that signing? I'm being a cruise legend and all that. The can I just can I just point out my mate Sam Guile is away in Ross Harbour with his missus and he's fucking in here watching a podcast. Your missus is not fuming with you, Sam, or what? Let's go, Sam. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I obviously like the chat's uh buzzing here, but we are gonna have to wrap it up because I can't keep Davy here all night, and I've actually got a flight, you know, tomorrow morning. Because if I didn't mention already, I'm away in Manchester this weekend, you know, so <laughs> Ronaldo returns. But yeah, no, that that's everything. Um, last question: Who wins the Super Bowl? <laughs> a very good question. I'm actually a massive NFL. Are you a massive fan? NFL fan? Okay, I, see, NFL I'm not. I don't fan. know a lot about it, so. A um, NFL well, that's the thing. I know that I know. Um, Tam- Tampa Bay is it won it last year. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So I used to be a New England Patriots just because of the simple fact. Of, Tom Brady. Um, Tom Brady, and then he left, and obviously they had a big bust up with the manager. So I'm now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. <laughs> I'm a turncoat. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're you're a Brady fan. You're not like a. Yeah, you're not I'm a, a Tom Brady man. Just okay. whoever Tom Brady plays for, I play for. I love it. Um. I appreciate everyone coming through, guys. Thank you so much for that. Um, Gerald has said Fred on goal, one 0 Newcastle. Gerald, you know what you can do? You can go fuck yourself. I think. No, I love you, bro. I love you, Gerald. But yeah, we're, uh, Fred, uh, Fred. We're not talking about Fred. We've talked about Fred enough. Um, yeah. But yes, no. I appreciate everyone coming through. Um, before we go, David, you're not going to know what I'm talking about, and there's probably going to be a lot of people in the chat that don't know what I'm talking about. But there may be a few people in here that do know what I'm talking about. Um, and I just want to be completely transparent with this. Um, so earlier, or just last weekend there, unfortunately, um, I, I just want to talk about this openly. Um, last weekend, we unfortunately lost a, a valued member of the community. Not all, not everyone in this chat is going to know him because this is more like the football crew that's in right now. Gerald, I know you know him. Um, we lost uh, our great friend Dyer. Um, we haven't really talked about it much on stream. Everyone who sort of knows about it has seen it already on Twitter and Discord or whatever. Um, so he he gets led the rest this Tuesday, and I just want to say a few words about him. Um, never met the guy in real life. I knew him for about uh, what like eight nine months or whatever, and the positive in- impact he had on me and everyone around him just goes to show how uh what we're building here he wasn't just part of my community it was he was uh part of many other communities um and a lot of people like they get into streaming or come into this community a lot of people focus on like follower counts and sub counts and views and everything like that but ultimately at the end of the day that that means fuck all i I, yes it it means something maybe because it shows many people are here but what we're building here is a lot bigger than um than viewers and followers and numbers, uh, because just one person you can see the impact he had on an entire community. So um yeah, we're building it. We're building a family, exactly, Stu. So for anyone who didn't know Dyer, please join me anyway. If you got a drink, um, got a raise. A big cheers to Dyer because I know we loved having a beer on a Friday night. Um, he was one of the guys who uh, doesn't even know anything about the Premier League football. And the first podcast I'd done for this show, he retweeted it and says, if you want to watch a dumbass Irish man talk, uh, talk Premier League football, here's your chance. He was always super supportive. We're not going to get upset about it. We're just going to continue the positive impact that he had on everyone around him, ourselves. So cheers, everybody. Love you all. I appreciate cheers. you. Cheers. And uh, Lovely RIP Dyer. Lovely touch, Lovely touch, bro. One more thing I just want to say about this is a little story. So as you can see right now, I have 
a Boston cap on, and the whole reason I'm wearing this right now is in tribute to Dyer. Just, uh, I know it might just be a cap or whatever, but he was a big Boston fan. And I remember like putting pictures in the chat a few weeks ago um, when I'd met Kate for the first time of me wearing a Yankees hat and how I'd only wore it to piss Dyer off because he's a big Boston fan. And he'd always said that when we meet one day, he's going to bring me a Boston cap. Um, and, you know, unfortunately that can't happen anymore. So we got the Boston cap in his tribute. Fuck the Yankees. The Yankees are shit. The Yankees are shit anyway. Um, but yeah, just uh, the only reason I want to bring that up is to say the positive impact he had on everybody around him. Just keep spreading positivity, honestly. You don't know what anyone's going through in their life. The person next to you, a friend or family member, you don't know what's going on inside their head. So the only thing, just, just, uh, just spread kindness. It's not hard. Enjoy your weekends. Thank you all for coming out. I love every single one of you. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Tell someone you love them. And if you need anything else at all from me, the DMs are always open.